to me, the big question for Missouri and Utah State is will either team be able to get stops? Plus, Eli Drinkwitz has gotten his quarterback for the 2024 cycle. Let's talk about that young man and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And thanks for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And you know what? Our team, the Missouri Tigers, should be a fun matchup on Thursday at the very least. This should be a high-scoring affair. And of course, my friends over at FanDuel agree with me. One of, if not the highest over-under totals as we speak. But again, just from looking at Utah State, and I did take a close look at their more most recent game, the Mountain West Conference Championship game against San Diego State. And the one thing I noticed is, well, one of Missouri's weaknesses, obviously, is an inability to guard the three-pointer very well. Seems like Utah State has that weakness as well. And I will say that the Aggies are what I would call very Mountain Westy. And what does that mean? No, it's not a brand new breed of dog. What I mean by that is that at that level of basketball, the Mountain West Conference It's not high major, but I wouldn't call it mid-major either, honestly. It's got to be somewhere a little bit in between. But the point is, at that level, you can either get guys who can play basketball really well but aren't all that really explosively athletic, or you can find guys who are explosively athletic who can't really play. Because honestly, the guys who are both you end up at Missouri or Duke or, you know, some other high major program or Georgia if you're Anthony Edwards and you happen to be from that home state, something like that. So for the most part, while this Utah State team is, I think they're more they're more the former, by the way. They've got a bunch of guys who can absolutely play but really aren't all that explosively athletic. That's why I feel like they're very Mountain Westy. And obviously, I think you have to start with Stephen Ashworth because he's not just a good shooter. He's a great shooter and just a dangerous offensive player, period. He can knock down mid-range shots, good passer, playmaker, and boy, defensively, he'll flop on you too. (laughs) That's one thing I noticed. Defense, not really a strength for Ashworth, so it'll be interesting to see if the Tigers try to drive at him, not the biggest guy in the world at six foot one, but again, an outstanding offensive player, one of the best, especially at his position in the entire country. Then you've got Max Shulga, who knocks down shots too, just like just about everybody on their squad, and he's their secondary ball handler. But they have a lot of guys who can handle it, honestly. Dan Aiken, Sean Bairstow, they're versatile. But my question is, any of these guys, while they're nice offensive pieces, are any of them long or explosive enough to bother Kobe Brown? Because right now, it just doesn't really seem like it. Now, they do start a traditional center, sort of like Missouri. Well, they start a traditional center in Mohamed Diara. Well, for the Aggies, it's seven foot one Trevin Dorius, but he doesn't always play the majority of the minutes. I think it depends a lot on the matchup for Utah State, and I think that could very well be the case in this one. Again, I assume he and Mo will start in this ball game, but it'll be interesting to see which one of these teams goes small the fastest, if and when, I suppose, but and just how small they go, honestly. Because really, there's not much rim protection on this Utah State team, sort of like Missouri, right? Other than Trevin Dorius and, well, Aiden Shaw on the Tigers. And honestly, if they do play that Dorius kid a lot and Missouri checks 
Diara out of the ball game. Well, then Darius is going to have to guard either Kobe Brown or Noah Carter, and I just can't see him having the lateral quickness to be able to stay with either one of those guys. Now, defensively, if you're Missouri, you may have noticed the Tigers have not played a lot of zone at least the last couple games. It's looked like all man-to-man defense in particular in the SEC tournament, and you know what? In this game, I, I wouldn't play any zone here either. Just way too good of shooting and, and passing. Again, just guys who can play basketball. Not, not any guys necessarily who are going to play NBA basketball. A bunch of just solid offensive college basketball players. And the result is one of the better offensive teams in the country. So to me, just Missouri's basic man-to-man, switch-heavy style of defense that they've relied on for most of the season is going to be the order of the day. Now, Dorius, the big 6'1 guy, he is capable of punishing a switch on a small guy down low, but to me, I'd much rather live with that action and just try to, you know, again, speaking of flopping, maybe try to pull the chair on him, flop, get an offensive charge or two, get him out of his comfort zone, maybe double on the dribble, that kind of deal. But to me, I'd much rather live with the big guy trying to work on even somebody like Nick Honor down there versus getting killed to death by Ashford and the rest of those really good Utah State shooters. Now, while on paper Utah State is an excellent offensive team, and I obviously praised a lot of their players offensively, but I will say buckets were very hard to come by for Utah State and for San Diego State in that Mountain West championship game. But I will say the Aztecs are seventh in the country at defending the three, whereas the Tigers are just 266 nationally. So that is quite worrisome. That's not a good part of the matchup. Again, I like the Utah State is not a crash the offensive boards kind of squad. That's one of Missouri's biggest faults, obviously, is defensive rebounding. So that that is good news for the Tigers, but at the same time, You could argue, well, some of it's good, some of it's bad. We're just going to have to see how it plays out on Thursday. And now let's shift to the football field for a little bit. Missouri gets their 2024 quarterback, Daniel Kalen, from West Bellevue, Nebraska. Actually, originally, Springfield, Missouri is where that young man grew up, and Drinkwitz and Company has been on him for a really long time. So let's talk about what I think of this young man. But first, I want to tell you about FanDuel because, of course, this is the perfect time of year to get in to FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're past the midway point of the NBA season. March Madness is here. And even better, new customers get a no sweat. First bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just get the FanDuel Sportsbook app, which is safe, secure, and easy to use. You got a million different types of wagers from straight up bets to money lines to futures. And heck, you can even combine a bunch of different type of bets for a same game parlay. So don't miss out on your chance for a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on that's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more make every moment more with fanduel an official sports betting partner of the nba folks go grab your bracket and listen to the locked on college basketball bracket breakdown with national analysis and the insights from our local experts The Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown has everything you need to make the most informed decisions on your bracket. Find the episode on Locked On College Basketball, wherever you get your podcasts, and on YouTube. And of course, we got to talk, we've been talking big time on basketball. We're going to get to more basketball here in just a little bit. But of course, I got to talk about the gridiron anytime Missouri signs a quarterback. And at first and at first glance, Daniel Kalen is just a three-star kid, right? With measurables and an arm that aren't going to blow anyone's mind. But it is apparent at the very least that Eli Drinkwitz and staff have liked this kid 
for a long, long time now, at least a year. So they got their guy. They've been on him for a while. And if you know how recruiting tends to work, you tend to just take one quarterback in each class. Now, ultimately, it's going to take a few years. We're going to have to wait to see how this evaluation went. Although, considering he still has a senior year of high school football here left to play, if his profile tends to rise, if he has another impressive year as his second year, I believe just his second year as a starter in high school, well, he could certainly see his profile rise quite a bit. There are programs like North Carolina and Kansas State that were very interested as well. Even programs like Notre Dame and, by the way, Coach Prime's Colorado have been kicking the tires too. So this isn't just a guy that Missouri was taking a chance on because he used to be from Springfield or something like that. No, this is a real prospect. And just from my eyes, the little I can tell, again, number one, all we really get is highlight videos, right? I'm not driving to Nebraska to watch this kid play in person. Sorry, I got stuff to do in my life other than that. But again, with all these caveats, it's really hard to evaluate high school quarterbacks anyway. But what I saw was pretty nice anticipation and touch at first glance. Now, those are two things you like to see from a quarterback, right? Touch and accuracy and also anticipation, knowing where you're throwing the ball quickly, getting it out of your hands quickly, getting it to the right player and recognizing what's open, often pre-snap. Before you even snap the ball, most good quarterbacks have a pretty good idea of where that thing is going. And also, probably most impressively of all to me, is that Daniel Kalen really does a nice job of keeping his eyes up, keeping his eyes downfield when he's under pressure. You saw that a few times in his film where he took a shot and managed to complete a pass 15 yards downfield anyway. And again, just showed the showed a lack of fear there that is pretty rare, especially at that age. Also, while he didn't run a lot in his highlights, you know, took off a couple times for a first down, I thought he showed good mobility in the pocket. So some real sort of natural QB traits there that are sort of, that are tough to, that are almost sort of, they're in you or they aren't. It's either a part of you or it isn't. It's one of those things that's tough to teach, pocket awareness and that kind of thing. Just again, really, really small sample and obviously, He's selecting the best plays for himself to put out there on the internet. I get all that. So with all those caveats at the same time, I was I was pretty duly impressed with young Daniel Kalen so far. And speaking of the 2024 football class, I thought it was fairly notable that St. Louis area wide receiver Ryan Wingo, before Kalen put out exactly officially who he was going to commit to Ryan Wingo on Twitter said hey hey I know who he's going to so that makes me think huh those guys are in communication aren't they again Ryan Wingo in case you're unaware a five-star player has offers from every big time program in the country Alabama Auburn Clemson Colorado you name it and for a long time it really seemed like well this looks like a little bit too big of a fish for Missouri to get out of St. Louis. But lately, I don't know what's changed, but it sure does seem like something has changed there. It seems like Wingo is really considering Missouri now. NLI, is it coming through? I don't know. Just a change of heart for the young man? I really have no idea. Maybe he liked what he saw. Maybe he's hearing good things from Luther Burden about Columbia and the whole setup over at Missouri. I truly have no idea, but just reading the tea leaves here, it sure seems like Ryan Wingo is looking like a pretty decent shot for Missouri. We'll have to see. Some really huge competition, obviously, but you never know at this point. And back to the hardwood. And as I've discussed, obviously, a little bit previously this week, the Tigers are underdogs in the first round against Utah State, despite being the lower seed. But let's talk a little bit more about more Missouri odds from our friends at FanDuel right after these quick words. So our Missouri Tigers are 350 to 1 to win the national championship over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And you know what? In good conscience, 
despite those very, very long odds and maybe the value's okay. I can't argue with the value at 350 to one, right? But I can't in good conscience pick a team that doesn't really play defense to win six straight games in March. It's just not something I do. Listen, I'm a gigantic homer, but even I have my limits. So I'm not going to tell you to bet on Missouri to win the national championship. But it starts to get a little bit more interesting when you talk about the Sweet 16. Now, could the Tigers win their first game? Obviously. Could they beat Arizona in the second round? Yeah, absolutely. We've seen that Missouri can play with absolutely anybody in the country. Again, especially, I think Arizona, a little bit more of an offensive team than a defensive team. I think that actually favors Missouri's style of basketball. But regardless, it's not hard to conceive of Missouri when it plays its best game upsetting a team like Arizona either. I just think, okay, six of those in a row, okay, now we're pushing it. But Missouri... To make the Sweet 16, again, they'd have to win their first two games to do so. Yes is plus 540. No is minus 850. So, again, for those of you unaware, if you're plus 540, this is all based on $100 bets, essentially. So, bet 100, you win 550. So, it's 5.5 to 1 is essentially the ratio there. No matter what the total is, you bet. You don't have to bet $100. You can bet $1. Doesn't matter. That's just the ratio. So again, I hope nobody's betting no on that. That's a terrible value. You don't want to bet $85 to win 10. You should pretty much never do that, especially against Missouri. That sounds like the least fun bet I could ever possibly make. Now, we know Missouri's made the Elite Eight a few times. Well, the odds for that, another Elite Eight appearance by the Tigers, either their fifth or sixth all-time, I want to say sixth, would be 13 to 1. So that's the payout there. And to make their first Final Four ever, to win the South Regional 50-1. to Are you feeling lucky? I'm not feeling that lucky considering Alabama is in the Tigers region. Frankly, if there was one team I wanted to avoid, it was the Tide. So, unfortunately, we got unfortunate. And one final note on the basketball court, Zach Austin, who averaged 14 points and five rebounds for for high point this past season, says he's heard from Missouri among several other schools. And, well, Zach Austin, not, not the biggest name in the world. The point is expect Missouri to be active in the transfer market once again. Just not as active as it was last season, right? I can't see a scenario where the Tigers have that many new players as last season. In fact, there isn't a scenario like that. But at the same time, if the Tigers add at least a couple transfers, I think that that wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. Also, once again, the Tigers underdogs over at bet on, or excuse me, ooh, said the wrong thing, over at FanDuel Sportsbook and If you don't think the Tigers have noticed that, if you don't think that Dennis Gates has noticed that and has brought it up to this very proud group of seniors and juniors mostly, well, I think they're going to use that as motivation, a little bulletin board material, don't you? I sure know I would. And thanks, as always, for joining me here on Locked on Mizzou. I appreciate it, as always. Be sure to check out Locked On College Basketball with Isaac Shade, Andy Patton, bringing you everything you need to know on and off the court, plus big-name experts, coaches, players throughout the college landscape. That's Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. So, until next time, I'm John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.